Um, you can see little green growths, um, which uh, you can imagine the fungus on bread when it goes off. Um, it's exactly the same type of thing. It, it starts off this little dot and then it radiates out. And it's a bad thing for plants as well as your bread. This building is important because it's got the growth rooms that I need to start growing plants. Um, it's in, within all the, the biology departments, so we've got some greenhouses here as well that will be used. Um, I won't be using them because I've got more control in there with the growth room. You can control temperature perfectly and you can get light as constant as you need it. This is a growth room. Um, you can see it's bright because we need as much light as possible. Plants lead light, as you know, and um, it's nice and reflective. Um, that's a thermistor. It's um, a very accurate um, uh, thermometer that records temperature, um, and you can plot exactly what temperature you've got in real time on the computer. It's about 20 degrees at the moment, but because we've opened it up, it'll be varying slightly, but it will stay exactly at 20 degrees. There might be a little bit of a variation, which is why we've got three thermometers. We've got a uh, humidifier down there. Um, this is to keep the ambient humid uh, humidity quite high, um, and that'll be on all the time when I start putting plants in there. It's not always light. You've got a diurnal and nocturnal settings. Uh, the temperature also changes. Um, it's not so important for what I'm doing at the moment because I've got little seedlings in there um, and they have a mechanism where they just count up the number of daylight hours they've got. So if um, you've got lights on all the time, they'll simply count up more daylight hours and they might germinate a bit quicker. But when you've got real plants in here, um, they do like it to be dark sometimes and light sometimes. I've got uh, 1,050 seeds, um, Coluna vulgaris, which is heather, that were collected in um, Beacon Hill, which is in Lincolnshire, I think, uh, which isn't too far away, collected last year. Um, they need to be kept in a fridge uh, for about a year because they're dormant and they lay dormant until you break their dormancy artificially in a fridge. Um, otherwise, they simply won't germinate. They'll just sit there for years and do nothing. And I've put them on this little layer of agar, which ensures that you keep, it's virtually 100% humidity in there, as you can see on the sides. Um, it keeps them nice and humid but there's very little um, nutrients in the agar. It's simply to germinate. Um, once they've germinated and they get these little leaves, which are called cotyledons, on there, then um, they need to be taken out as soon as possible because they're desperate to start photosynthesizing and they can't if they haven't got any nutrients. It's, it's slightly stressful to make sure that you've got enough coming out um, because they, they wouldn't necessarily reliably germinate. Now, we've been very lucky with the number we've got. Um, I only actually need 250, but I've got out 10, uh, 1,050 just to make sure that I got enough. And also you can see in this one here, um, you've got an infection with fungus. Um, you can see little green growths, um, which uh, you can imagine the fungus on bread when it goes off. Um, it's exactly the same type of thing. It, it starts off this little dot and then it radiates out. And it's a bad thing for plants as well as your bread. You cut just the top layer, there's hundreds of seeds in each flower head, so you go out, you see this nice healthy heather bush that's seeded during the autumn, and um, you cut just the top layer off, um, you don't need too much, a little bag full about that much, and um, then you bring them back, put them in the fridge, leave them for a year, and then you take them out, stick some of the flower heads which are now dry in your hands, rub them together, just, just like that, and onto paper, and then you can use the, um, it's kind of a, almost a, not such static, but the, the connection with the paper, you can tilt it and the, all the debris sticks to the paper, but the seeds don't. And we found that out purely by chance, by just tipping the paper over and thinking, all these seeds are rolling off, and that was convenient. Um, because otherwise it would have taken days to pick them out one by one with a, with a brush. Um, so we found out we could just tip the paper and they all rolled off and that's it, and then you, put them in a little pot, stick them back in the fridge until you need them. It took hours. Um, you need a tiny brush. Um, you, the seeds are so small that it would be preferable to use a microscope to try and see them. Um, but I just used, did it by eye, and you use a tiny brush and take them out one by one and put them on the agar. So overall this took about four hours to do. They've been sitting here for about a month and they're tiny. <laughs> The next step is to take these seedlings out and to put them into soils. Uh, I've been going around the country collecting soils from different heathlands 
um, they have different nitrogen depositions um, from the atmosphere, so when it rains, um, there's a little bit of nitrogen in the rain and it fertilizes the heathland. And across the country, you've got very little nitrogen and nitrogen pollution in Scotland, a lot more around cities, so it varies. And we're wondering whether heather will grow better um, under higher nitrogen deposition, or is the, is the soil fertility higher, or will it grow worse? Um, we know that heather um, isn't very good at growing fast, hence why it's been here a month and it's really still quite tiny. Grasses, you may notice in your garden, grow a heck of a lot faster, um, but they need more fertility, uh, they need a higher fertility. So um, there's a different growth rate there. Um, so does high fertility in the soil mean that heather does grow faster, but not quite fast enough? Or does it not grow well at all? That's what we're trying to find out. Uh, possibly six, seven months before they're about that size, maybe. They grow really slowly. What do you do with your time all the rest of the time? <laughs> Uh, all the rest of the time I have to come in here every other day and water the plants um, and that takes a little while because I'm going to have 250 plants to water individually and it needs to be quite accurate how you water them and I'll be uh, in the lab reading and learning the subject is what I'll be doing, learning more about the subject. Uh, we're losing Heather um, very quickly. Uh, we've lost um, in the East Midlands alone about 85% over since about 1920 to 1970. Um, it's due to land use change, people have turned it into agricultural land, but it's also due to increased nitrogen pollution um, from again agriculture or from um, cars and industry and things like that. So um, that's possibly why we're losing it and this is one of the things we're looking at. Um, if we lose it, then Heathland supports all the um, native reptiles, supports three birds that are endangered to the point that they could possibly go extinct, like the nightjar, and um, a number of insects as well, about 300 species of spider. So um, if we start losing heather, we lose all those species as well.